بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. So let me introduce myself. My name is Uthman. Uh, my kunya is Abu Kutub, as my Sheikh used to call me, and also Abu Yusuf, from my son Yusuf, uh, Ibn Farooq, because my father's name was Farooq, Yusuf Zay, from my tribe. Um, Alhamdulillah, uh, I am the current Imam for Majd al Rabat al Islamiyah in San Diego, California. Uh, I'm also a consultant in regulatory and quality affairs having to do with medical devices, uh, ISO certifications, and EUMDR, and so on and so on. My work at the Masjid is only fi sabilillah. I do not get a salary here. All of our durus, our halaqat, our lessons are free of charge. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I work earn my living and use that money for myself and then for the masjid and the durus we do it fi sabilillah. About me, so I was born in Pakistan to a family of uh, Pashtun tribe, Yusuf Zay. Uh, but when I was very young, I left Pakistan. Um, my father, the man of uh, very strong character, um, and he raised us in a very tough way. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, in a very loving way, um, I left Pakistan when I was around six and a half, seven years of age, and we went to England. I stayed in Manchester and London and parts of England for about a year and a half, and around eight, nine years of age, I came to the United States. Um, very young at the time, it wasn't easy, because <laughs> I, my parents didn't realize that in the United States there were good areas and there were bad areas. There were very nice neighborhoods and ghetto neighborhoods. They thought all of the U.S. was just, you know, paved with gold kind of stuff. So uh, I went to a very, uh, what we would call here a ghetto school, and my elementary school was quite rough. Um, but I went there the first day of school, my parents thinking that, you know, my child is going to school in the U.S., wearing a suit, a bow tie, with a British accent. So I went there and said, hello, my name is Usman. How can I, pleasure making your acquaintance. <laughs> uh, in the ghetto, didn't really go over that well. First day, got in a lot of fights, went home, suit was all ripped up, bow tie ripped off, black eyed. Mom was like, what happened? He sent me to school with a suit on. So, um, taught me how to you know, fight very early in life. And uh, being in the kind of school it was, there was a lot of fights. Uh, when I was about 10 years of age, um, I didn't have any Muslim friends at the time. We didn't know any Muslims in San Diego. Uh, I did have a, a friend who was of Iranian heritage, um, and his family was Shia, but they had become Christian to come to the United States because in the time of the Khomeini or whatever, if you were Christian from Iran, you got very easy immigration. So they were Christians, but they were Iranian, and you know he was a friend of mine. Uh, we were about ten years of age at the time. He got into a fight with uh, three people from a gang here in San Diego, and I jumped in to help my friend at the time. And he ran away. I got jumped by three older gang members. And at the time, uh, it was a very difficult thing. So the only other thing you could do at that time was to then get with another gang who would then give you that kind of support. So around 10 years of age, I got involved in the gang life. And in Southern California, we have a structure of gangs which called Sorenios. And these are Southern California Mexican gangs. Uh, being the color I was uh, in my school, there was no Pakistanis, Afghanis, Muslims. In my whole elementary school, I didn't know a single Muslim. But I was too uh, dark to you know, hang out with the Caucasians, the white guys, and I was too light to hang out with the African Americans, so went in with the Mexicans. <laughs> and there was a local gang called East San Diego, and uh, so I basically started to roll with them as a protection because of the fight that I had got into the other gang, and then we got to you know pay back the other gang and move back and forth. Around 12 years of age, I became an actual gang member, bona fide member of a gang. Since then, uh, basically, and it was a tough life. My parents divorced when I was very young. Um, so my mother, very great mother, did a lot to provide. She would work two jobs, make sure there was income and food. And so I, I was you know, with my friends, which were non-Muslims, gang members for a long time. And it was, it was a difficult uh, time because, you know, you would have gang wars and uh, growing up, 12 of my uh, friends that I grew up with that were friends, I mean, not just acquaintances, people that I grew up with died, like, were killed, you know, either stabbed or shot. Um, you know, it was, it was, that was that type of lifestyle. Uh, when I was around 17 years of age, I had a friend named Manuel Maniaga, 
and he was uh, older than me, he was two years older than me. And, you know, we were in the same gang, same setup, and that was a gang, a subsect called the AEK, which is part of which is called Eastside today, Evil Boys, Surenios. Um, he got killed. And it was, and it was uh, something that was uh, difficult because we were 12 leaders from a gang that had about 600 people. And I was one of them, and he was one of them. And uh, it was supposed to be a murder for me. It was set up. Somebody, a girl called me. At the time, we didn't have cell phones and pagers and things, but uh, we had pagers, not cell phones. So you would get a page, and you would go and you would meet at a payphone, and you would call. Um, I don't know if kids today know what payphones are, um, but we got a page, and I was supposed to go, but I was busy with somebody else. I told him, "Hey, you go in front of me instead of me." So he went to meet, and it was a setup. And people walked up at the payphone, shot him nine times, uh, and he died. And from that time, I started to think about what is the point of life. Because at that time, and he, we had a car we used to share together. It was a 64 Impala, it was lowered, hydraulics, very nice. And that was like the cool thing at the time, a fancy car. And a lot of money, uh, because obviously we were involved in drug dealing at the time. Um, so, you, you know, even though we were very young, we used to have lots of cash on us, a lot of girls, a lot of fame. So all the things that you would think are factors of success, we had. But, and, yeah, and I saw him being buried. Um, you know, no girl went in with him in the grave. No money went in with him. The car wasn't buried. His, father, his brothers were driving the car. They were fighting over his clothes the first day. And all the girls that he used to date were walking around with somebody else. I realized that those things don't really benefit you. Um, so at that time, um, I, I went through some other situations. You know, I was uh, I was actually good in school, even though I was, you know, kicked out of six, seven schools. Um, I used to go to Alice Burney, then kicked out, went to Wilson Middle School, then kicked out, went to PB Middle School, then I was kicked out for hitting a teacher. I went to uh, Hoover High School the first week, gang fighting, get kicked out, went to Mission Bay, got kicked out. Uh, went to John Muir School of Humanistic Studies, got kicked out. Um, graduated from Home Studies, but I had a really good GPA. I graduated with a 4.0, I was good in school. I uh, just, you know, a lot of social issues. So at that time, um, I, uh, I went to, I was taking college classes. I went back to my high school, which one of the ones that I was kicked out of was called John Muir School of Humanistic Studies. I was parked outside and some kid was walking around looking tough. So I, just as a joke, I popped my trunk. I took out a, uh, uh, the jack, the, the, the little piece that goes into the jack to, to jack up the car. And I wrapped it with a cloth and I jumped out at him just to try to scare them. And at that time, um, they, the people of the school, not realizing that it wasn't a real gun, uh, they called the police. So somebody, helicopters came, raided my house, police followed me home. I had all kinds of guns in the house, so I got arrested and they wanted to give me, at minimum, 10 years in prison. There were five felonies at the time they were trying to put on me. Interestingly, I mean, being very honest with you, no reason uh, not to be honest. I mean, I used to carry a gun to school all the time. I mean, I had a 38, I before that a 25, I used to carry it all the time. Never got arrested for it, never got caught with it. This time, it's Qadr of Allah, I didn't have anything with me, but I did uh, get caught up. And then, even though when they opened my trunk, they saw that I had no gun, but when they went in my house, they found that I had many guns, shot off shotguns, illegal guns. So, they arrested me. Um, went to jail and you know, I mean at that time I was just turning 18 so I uh, went straight to a you know, adult jail I mean alhamdulillah at that time because of the gang contacts I had no problem as far as being attacked or anything like that because the gang in prison also and jails have their own backing but I, I realized that this was a wake-up call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, my lawyer at the time wanted to give me two years in prison uh, for a plea deal and the district attorney didn't accept it. They said a minimum we want 10 years in prison. But alhamdulillah when, when the case went to court, um, all the witnesses and everything that were against me didn't show up and the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with, they came, uh, it got all the charges got dropped, even the illegal gun charge, everything got dropped, alhamdulillah, didn't get charged with anything. So it was time to change my life, alhamdulillah. Uh, from that time I started to then go uh, I studied the Quran. Some religious brothers uh, had gotten hold of my address. They had come to visit me and speak to me. And alhamdulillah, from them, I started to want to go study. Um, my original studies, I mean, I started just trying to learn how to read Quran and things because I, as growing up, I wasn't taught. So, you know, I was 18 years old, sitting with little kids going, Alif, Ba, Ta, Ta. Alhamdulillah, started to try to learn 
and we would learn basically Hanafi fiqh and things that we had available to us here. Uh, one of uh, my teachers, may Allah have mercy on him, Sheikh Awad al Khawri, uh, and he wasn't somebody that I had a lot of time with, but he was somebody that guided us towards Aqidah Salafiyah and learning from the Quran and Sunnah and things. So he used to be up in Oregon and we used to call and, and he used to teach us books over the phone. And every time we would try to, you know, there was a big ijtima or gathering where we could meet with him, we would sit with him and get his nasiha. Um, he wrote me a tazkiyah and then I wanted to apply at the Islamic University. Qadar um, Allah ma shafa'al, I didn't get in. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, I didn't give up on my wanting to study. So then I left, uh, I collected some money. I left the U.S. I went to Amarat and I went to a place called Al Ain. And with the Tazkiyah from Sheikh Awad, I sat with the Sheikh Yusuf Mish'al. And يعني, he was a Sheikh, mashallah, may Allah reward him. And he started to teach different durus and things. Uh, and he had graduated from the Islamic University, uh, Umar Qura and stuff like this. But he couldn't dedicate full time to me. So he told me, look, you want to study more, mashallah. He wrote me a tazkiyah as well, um, seeing I mean, that it was good aqidah and things like this. And I went to a sheikh in Amarat named Sheikh Dr. Sadiq Al-Manna. Sheikh Sadiq Al-Manna, may Allah reward him. Uh, he was originally from Sudan, memorized the Quran when he was like about five years of age, went to Saudi and lived in Saudi from that time till he graduated with his PhD from Umm al -Qura. He had, uh, and he specialized in tafsir and hadith. He had memorized the Quran, not just the Quran, but in all the different Qur'at. He would recite in different Qur'at. He had memorized the books of hadith, uh, the famous ones like the Kutub al Sitta. When he would teach, he would memorize, he would teach from memory. I would have the matan, he would teach from memory. And in Amarat at the time, because of his uh, outspoken criticism of some of the wrongs, he was not allowed to teach in any university or masjid. So he had a lot of time. His son was the Imam of the Masjid. That's how they used to live. But he was very poor. I mean, he lived a very simple, poor lifestyle. But Alhamdulillah, I studied with him at multiple times. At one time I said with him for over a year, he didn't charge me a penny. And he not even a single penny. And we used to sit every day. We used to have time between Duhur and Asr. It used to be time for Fiqh and from Asr to Maghrib Hadith. So from Fiqh, started to study books like Al-Umda and Zadul Mustaqni'a and their Shuruh and things like this. And uh, this is where I really started to benefit every day studying with the Shaykh, me and him one-on-one -on -one in his library. Immense benefit. And يعني, in Hadith, we used to study like Umdat Al-Ahkam and then Bulug Al-Maram. And then يعني, it was every day except Friday. And on Fridays, I would try to spend time with him just to benefit from him in Akhlaq and Adab. And Subhanallah, I learned great manners with him. And one of the things, all this time, he dedicated every single day from Duhur till Maghrib, he didn't take a single penny from me, only for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He taught me principles. Um, at the same time, at night uh, after Isha, I would have uh, durus with another sheikh from Azhar, learning the Arabic language and doing ajrumiya and things like this. And in the mornings uh, before Fajr, and then a little bit after Fajr, I would sit with shiuch in the masajid to do Quran with them. So it was a very hectic, uh, busy schedule, and I funded it myself. Basically, I didn't take any scholarships or anything. I need mean, to do Quran in the morning and then till uh, from Ishraq till Dhuhr, I had my own time, you know, do my own things. And then from Dhuhr till Maghrib, I would have the with the Sheikh. And then from Maghrib to Isha, I would have a break, go home, eat, do your regular things. And then from Isha till a good part of the night, then I would do the Arabic language. Um, after that, I went to Amarat, uh, I went to Jordan as well, and you know, places to go and practice Arabic and learn. Uh, I came back to the US, went back to Amarat. Then I came back to the U.S. and worked, saved money. And then I went to Pakistan. To Pakistan, um, I mean, alhamdulillah, I found Mahad uh, al-Lughal Arabiya in Islamabad with Sheikh uh, Dr. Ubaid uh, al-Rahman, uh, Mahmoud Bashir, Sheikh Abdul Rahman uh, Bashir. I have not seen a scholar that has that kind of a command of uh, Arabic balagha, even though he's not Arab, but he has a PhD in it and and he, with uh, Balagha, he was amazing. So I wanted to study Alfiya Ibn Malik with him. Uh, and he accepted me as a student. Once again, I spent a year with him every day. And he didn't charge a penny from me. I mean, the whole time, only for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we did Ajrumiya again, Qatrut al in, in a rough, and in, kind of in a brief manner. And while studying with him, we did Alfiya ibn Malik and I used to memorize uh, yani, uh, the parts of the matan and read it to him and he would test us and 
Subhanallah, uh, at that time he wanted me to also teach. So I, at the time I started to teach uh, Usul al Fiqh and Hadith, Mustalal Hadith, which I had learned with Sheikh Sadiq uh, while I was learning uh, in depth Balagha and Sarf and Nahu and things with him. And he would have special classes about Balagha of the Quran and eloquence of speech and things. Um, we started also attending the Durus of Sheikh Abu Muhammad Aminullah al Bishawari, uh, who was an amazing scholar, became one of my focal teachers after that, and also a Sheikh Dr. Sohail Hassan, uh, one of the professors at the Islamic Islamic University. And Dr. Sohail Hassan, he used to teach uh, Sunan Abi Dawood and Mishkat in Arabic. So I liked it because I was in Pakistan, but I was his whole dars question answer everything was in Arabic. So I studied Mishkat with him. And during those durus, they, both of them, they, they told me, why don't you also sign up at the Islamic University? Uh, I had already done a bachelor's in computer science and a master's here. So I transferred some of my general credits and uh, joined a MPhil program there. Uh, and then alhamdulillah, I did my bachelor's and master's together there in Islamic studies. So I, I graduated from the Islamic University of Islamabad with a master's focused in hadith. Um, alhamdulillah, at that time, I also started to then go uh, up north to Peshawar and the ulama, like Sheikh Ghulam Allah Rahmati and Sheikh Abdul Salam Rustami and attend some of his durus and tafsir and Sheikh Amin Allah in the books of Hadith and Al-Bukhari in their durus. I continued my studies there until I came back to the United States and then Alhamdulillah, I went back uh, many times again to Pakistan, especially to Peshawar with Sheikh Amin Allah and Sheikh Ghulam Allah and Sheikh Abdul Aziz Nuristani and those are Imma and ulama over there and benefited from them in different durus and halaqat and reciting tune to them and getting ijazat and asanid in the classic method from them. Alhamdulillah, uh, now I'm in San Diego, California and we have Majd al-Ribat al islamiyah and here we have durus, alhamdulillah, all free of charge, everybody's uh, welcome. Um, and if you're not in San Diego, we have uh, a YouTube channel that we live stream those durus and we invite everybody to come and benefit uh, with them. And this is alhamdulillah, a nama from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, any yani Friday nights right now, we're doing Mustala al-Hadith from the Kitab Nuzhat al-Nadr. And Saturdays, we're doing Tariq. We did the Seerah al-Nabawiyah from Ahadith al-Sahiha. And we did, alhamdulillah, the Khilaf Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiyallahu anhum, and Hassan, and uh, uh, Ibn Ali, radiyallahu anhum, and Zubay, Abdullah ibn Zubayr, radiyallahu anhum, and then others. We're going on right now, we're doing Umar Abdul Aziz, and we're going to continue. So we encourage everybody to go to YouTube and put Masjid, M-A-S-J-I-D, Ribat, R-I-B-A-T, and you will find the channel and you can subscribe and follow those durus free of charge. Lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also have Aqeedah, we did Lumat Atiqad and Sharh al-Sunnah and other kutub like Usul al here. Uh, some of those videos are also there. You can follow those and other books and hadith and things. And in Fiqh, we did Umda and Aqsar al-Mukhtasarat, the, the parts of Ibadat, and those are online as well. And we have those durus going on, alhamdulillah, we had Arabic language and, and things uh, here in San Diego and all of our durus are free of charge and most of them are online, you can benefit from that. Uh, we also have, alhamdulillah, uh, da'wah for non-Muslims and others that we do here in San Diego, California through One Message Foundation. So we encourage people to go to YouTube and put in One Message Foundation. This is our da'wah program. Alhamdulillah, we have other ulama and tulab ilm that we invite to work with us. And we have events at different universities and colleges and every weekend, Alhamdulillah in San Diego on Saturdays and Sundays, we have brothers who get together and they go out and put tables out in different parks like on Sundays in Balboa Park. Um, and we go and give da'wah. Alhamdulillah, we've had many brothers that took shahada there and then came to the masjid and then we put them in the program of learning uh, aqidah and salah and things like this. And uh, this is a part of what we're doing. So we encourage everybody to also benefit from those videos as well on One Message Foundation. And I'm on Twitter under uh, at Abu, A-B-U underscore Kutub, K-U-T-U-B. Just basically a Twitter that, you know, about the different books, uh, alhamdulillah, so people can benefit from that. Um, when I was doing my master's, one of my thesis was about the different ahadith, about the issue of Rafa al -Adain. Those got published as a book, but we didn't want to sell and make money. We made it waqf. So if anybody wants, um, they can look it up on my university website or on academia.org. If you put uh, the books called Abdul Qawlain Fi Mas'ala Raful Yadain, if you put Rahman ibn Farooq, which is me, the book will come up. It's a PDF, uh, it's free of charge. You can benefit from that. Or my second book was about the Imama. That's only in Arabic, but for those who speak Arabic, it's Al Imama fi Dual Quran wa Sunnah wa Faham Salaf al Ummah. It's also online, free. Uh, Academy.org has it. You can print it, keep it, use it, inshallah. Working on a few other books right now. One of them is Hadi alayhi salatu salam fi wad al 
يُمْنَعَ عَلَى الْيُسْرَى فِي الْقِيَامِ which is about all of the masail about folding the hands يعني where to fold, folding or not folding in different madahib before ruku, after ruku, how and all of the ahadith on that subject uh, working on another book about the ishara in salah and another book about يعني a basic book for anybody who becomes Muslim to learn the basics of aqeedah and the everyday masail like wudu and salah and nikah and things with يعني one dalil per masala uh, without going into great detail, but inshallah, so these are the projects we have going on. Uh, we invite everybody to inshallah uh, work together on these. Wa jazakum Allahu khairan. Ida ajaba kal video la tansa li ajaba wa taliq. Wa likiya sila kakula jadid, ishtarik alam.